Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. This video is about depreciation of tangible non-current assets, typically things like property, plant and equipment. The IFRS definitions of depreciation come from IAS 16 and it says that depreciation is the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount, which is usually the cost more or less, of an asset over its useful life. So what we're trying to do here is spread the cost of an asset over a time period, which is its useful life. And people become confused about this point. Depreciation is not trying to value an asset at each individual time point. It's just trying to spread the cost or allocate the cost to time periods. Uh, so that's a mistake people make. It is about, depreciation is about allocation of the cost. It is not about valuing an asset at a particular point in time. And oftentimes, the values of assets on the balance sheet after depreciation has been deducted will not be equal to you know what they would be worth if you were to sell them off or something like that. Okay, so um, depreciable amount, what is that? Well, depreciable amount is the cost of an asset or other amounts substituted for cost less its residual value. So the depreciable amount is essentially what you paid for the asset, usually, and certainly in, in, uh, in this introductory courses case, um, less its residual value. And what's residual value? Residual value is what you're expecting to get for the asset at the end of its useful life. So most companies decide that an asset is gonna last a certain time period, and then it will be worth uh, something at the end of its life. So these are the accounting standards definitions. These are like accounting rules and the one we're dealing with is IAS 16. And within that standard, useful life is defined as the period over an asset is, uh, over which an asset is expected to be available for use by the entity. So essentially it's how long the entity expects to keep the asset. Um, and then there's a B1, which we don't really deal with, uh, which is the number of production or similar units expected to be obtained from the asset. So uh, if the asset has a life in terms of it can produce 10,000 units or a million units or something like that, then we use that instead. But uh, essentially in, in, in this course, it's the period. We use a time period to depreciate uh, assets. And then, as I said, the residual value of an asset is the estimated amount that an entity would currently obtain from disposal of the asset after deducting the estimate, uh, estimated costs of disposal. So it's essentially what the, our estimate now, as we acquire the asset, is of what we are going to get from disposing of the asset when it reaches the end of its uh, useful life. So let's have a look at depreciation, uh, an example. A business buys a car for 35,000. It expects to keep the car for five years when its value will be 17,000. Uh, the business uses the straight line method of depreciation. And this is the only method that we're going to use um, in, in, the, in this course. Um, we're not going to look into other methods. And the straight line method of depreciation is very simple. You allocate the cost evenly 
over the life over each year of the life of the asset so the cost of the car is 35000 less the residual value of 17000 gives us 18000 which is the depreciable amount so let's look at how we calculate one year's depreciation on this car it costs 35000 its residual value is 17000 which means the depreciable amount is 18,000. We divide that by the useful life because we're using straight line depreciation and we're spreading the cost evenly in each one of the years of the asset's life. So that means that our depreciation charge for one year is going to be 3,600. So let's look at what happens then to the um, items that are going to show up in the balance sheet uh, because uh, the company has this car. And this won't show up. I, I've shown it here as if it's on the you know face of the balance sheet. It's not. Um, uh, it will be uh, away in a note to the balance sheet, these kind of calculations. So this is the first year we have the car over here. And then we move in this direction. This is the most current year, um, the third year of the life of the car. So the cost of the car is 35,000 and the cost of the car is going to stay the same uh, over the three years. As long as we don't get rid of the car, it stays there on our balance sheet at cost. We're also going to have accumulated depreciation. And what is accumulated depreciation? Well, that is the depreciation to date on the car. So it is all of the depreciation added up on the car to the current uh, date. In the first year, we're going to depreciate the car by 3,600. In the next year, we will also depreciate it by 3,600, which will then mean that the accumulated depreciation or uh, the depreciation to date is 7,200 and in the third year we'll charge another 3,600 of depreciation giving us 10,800. When, when we subtract the accumulated depreciation from the cost we get 31,400, 27,800 and 24,200. This is called and this is important uh, this is called the net book value of the asset the net book value and the definition of net book value is cost minus accumulated depreciation so it's exactly what's in uh, this calculation here it's cost minus accumulated depreciation okay uh, so as I say what will show up in the balance sheets that you will see is this line here the net book value you won't see the detail that will all be put in a note uh, to the accounts. So in the income statement, the business would show a depreciation cost of 3,600 each year. So we've now moved on to the income statement. What goes in there as a cost? And what goes in there as a cost is the depreciation charge for just one year. And that goes into each year that we own the car. So each one of the five years we own the car, uh, we're going to be putting in that 3,600 as a cost. And remember, as I said at the start, depreciation is an allocation of the cost. It is not trying to value the assets. So, you know, we're not saying that the, the, the uh, values uh, that we had on the last page at the end of X2 and X3, that those are accurate values for the car. We're just trying to spread the cost over the five years that we have the car. How do we record depreciation using the debit and credit system? We record depreciation by the increasing the depreciation expense in the income statement. So this is an expense. We debit expenses, generally speaking. So we debit uh, depreciation expense and that's in the income statement with 3,600. And what do we credit? Well, we credit accumulated depreciation in the statement of financial position, again, with 3,600. Just note that this is a non-cash expense. 
we did have a cash expense when we bought the motor vehicle we had thirty five thousand going out um but uh what we have here is an allocation of the cost and that that does has nothing to do with bank it's it's like an accruals uh type of 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 entry uh, rather than one that involves the bank the accumulated depreciation will be offset against the cost of the asset in the statement of financial uh, positions. So we will uh, have the cost of 35,000 in the first at the end of the first year minus uh, this accumulated depreciation here of 3,600. So the summary is that non current assets are depreciated it depreciated in order to allocate their cost to the accounting periods that benefit from their use. And the accounting entry we make to record depreciation is to debit depreciation expense, credit um, accumulated depreciation in the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.